Are you looking for a mount that you can set up very quickly and easily for some visual astronomy? Maybe a mount that's manual that doesn't require power? Well, SV Boney has a solution with their SV225 mount. It's a manual Altas mount designed to be perfect for quick visual astronomy and the occasional astrophotography if you're thinking about getting lucky tonight, if you know what I mean. And, and by that I mean lucky imaging or very short exposure astrophotography. Finding a decent and affordable manual Altas mount can be challenging. The cheaper ones are usually poorly made that can't support a lot of weight and you don't feel comfortable putting stuff on there. And some of the more higher priced ones may be built really well, but they can be really expensive and not an investment that you may want to take. As some of you know, I do a lot of outreach and sometimes I just want to keep things simple. I want a mound that I can plop on the ground, put a telescope on it and point it to something and start observing. And for the most part, that mount is going to be manual that I can control with my hands, find what I need and, and be done with it. For a long time, I used my SE mount, which is an electronic Altaz mount. Then I switched over to my AVX mount, which is an equatorial mount. And then finally I got myself the Orion Skyview Pro, which is actually a manual equatorial mount with slow motion controls, which actually made me do visual astronomy a little bit more easily because I can, again, pop it on the ground and start using it. And that thing came with a motor that I can power with D batteries, which was pretty cool, but it was very heavy, including my AVX. So I started looking at lighter weight options. And one of the reasons I got the AZ GTI is because it's very lightweight, it's very small. It has a payload capacity of 11 pounds, which will fit most of my telescopes. But of course it requires power and I need my cell phone in order to properly control it. But I wanted to go low tech, extremely low tech. And that's where the SV Boney SV225 comes into play. So first, thanks to SV Boney for sending this mount to me for testing and review. And if you've watched some of my older videos, you know that I'm a pretty big fan of SV Boney, mainly because their product quality has gotten better and better over the years, while the prices have remained the same and in some cases have gotten lower. So this is the manual mount with fine adjustment controls. And it's mostly made of aluminum, so even though it's it feels very solid, it's very lightweight. I can pick this up with one hand very easily. I can put a telescope on there and transport it from one location to another without much hassle. This weighs just 2.3 kilograms or a little over five pounds and it has a payload capacity of 10 kilograms or almost 22 pounds, which is incredible. Some of the other Altas mounts that I've looked at have a payload capacity of between 10 and 15 pounds. And of course, my primary goal with this mount is for outreach, somewhere that I can just go and set up really quickly and look at stuff with people passing by. And in fact, I've already taken this out to two different outreach events. I've only had this for about three weeks at this point. One of those outreach events was with my astronomy club, the Amateur Telescope Makers of Boston, where it took place at a school where almost 200 people stopped by to take a look at the moon, mostly elementary school kids, and it was incredible. And the second one was a sidewalk astronomy session where I partnered up with Boston Pop Scope, and we set up on the sidewalk in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we had almost 150 people look through our scopes. We looked at Saturn, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Sirius, and the Pleiades from a Portal 8-9 location. It was super cold, so setting this up was really easy and packing up was even easier. So that's when I knew that this was a clear winner. That's something that I going to add to my arsenal moving forward. But now let's take a step back and see what comes in the box and quickly install this onto my AZ GTI mount here and I'll go over the anatomy of this mount. In the box we have the manual and inside some styrofoam we have some stuff. So first we have the locking screws and some allen wrenches that'll help us make some adjustments. Then this looks like a handlebar that we'll use to adjust the mount manually. Then we have one slow motion control and then a second slow motion control that's a little bit bigger. Then we have the actual mount itself. The base looks like it's installed upside down, so before we move forward, let's turn it around. The largest Allen wrench here is used to separate the two pieces really quickly, and then I flip it around, and then I reinstall the bolt, and now it's ready to be mounted. And quickly installing this on my Skywatcher AZ GTI tripod, which has come in handy with uh, so many projects of mine. There's a worm shaft here on the azimuth part of the mount with a flat piece cut out. And when we take one of our slow motion controls, it really doesn't matter which one you use, but we normally use the longer one on the azimuth because it'll be a little bit farther away to reach. And this is designed perfectly fit into the shaft and the screw grabs onto the flat part of the shaft for a really nice lock. 
So you put it in, we wanna make sure we tighten the screw as much as possible so that it doesn't slip out later on when we're making adjustments. And before we move on to the altitude part of the mount, we'll first use take one of the locking screws and screw this into place here. It goes right in and it just tightens, just turn it, turn it, turn it. And now the azimuth is locked and you can only move it using the slow motion controls and it feels really smooth. We can unlock it and move the mount and azimuth pretty freely. If the screw handle seems to get in the way, you can fix it without making any kind of adjustments by pulling the handle and then turning it and then it'll settle into one of the predefined locations so that you can make sure that it's always out of the way. Now we'll move up to the altitude and install the slow motion control here on the worm shaft as well. It's exactly the same thing as the azimuth. Make sure you tighten the screws as much as you can. And then now we'll install the locking screw on the top side as well. This one directly on top is a little bit harder to see, but it's the exact same idea. If you need to make adjustments to where the handle goes, just pull up here in this case and turn it around and let it settle into its next slot. Next, we have the handle that we want to install that will let us freely control the mount without having to touch the scope, the slow motion controls or any other, other part of the mount. So this just screws right in and it's super easy and we can now move the mount as we please. Now looking at the front at the dovetail, we have three different locking screws. The first one is the big knob, which is the main locking mechanism. And the other two are for additional support. And although the locking screw mechanism works just fine, one of the things I don't like about it is that it can leave marks on your dovetail plates, which if you tighten enough, you know, aluminum on aluminum, it'll make some scratches, which is not the end of the world. You know, it's wear and tear, it's bound to happen. But I kind of wish that they came out with something like this. If it was installed, pre-installed with something like this, where it uses a bar here, where, you know, as you can see this kind of curved in. So we can put our dovetail here and it tightens this way. There's only one locking knob, but there's just more surface area that connects to the dovetail plate, which means that it's less likely to scratch and it'll get a better grip just because of the amount of surface area to surface area that the dovetail plate and this will touch. And an upgrade like this would cost another, another 30 or $40, depending on where you get it, which brand you get it. But this is like fully aluminum. I can install this myself and I probably will get one for this later on because I see myself pretty heavily using this. Although I wish that SV Boney came, you know, installed this, pre-installed something like this onto this mount, it probably would have increased the price from $130 to maybe $150, but totally would have been worth it. Going back to the installation, I have my Nexstar 6 SE and I'll install this. It fits in pretty nicely on the mount and it can easily handle the load. The telescope by itself is about eight pounds without, with a little bit of eyepieces, but you can see that it's really well balanced handles it really nicely and this telescope is what I used for my last two sessions and it's also the one I plan to use for my next two star party sessions. Since this has a load capacity of 10 kilograms or about 22 pounds I think this can handle my Celestron Edge HD8 8 inch SCT which weighs about 14 pounds but that telescope doesn't come with a Vixen dovetail so it wouldn't really fit and I would have to use an adapter which would increase the load. Although this, I think it can handle it, I, I would not install it because I don't know how well it would do. But it is in the realm of possibilities, which is pretty cool. A couple things I'll point out here is that there are worm shafts on this side as well. So if you find yourself wanting to use the tel telescope this way, you can uninstall the slow motion control from this end and install on this end and it'll work the exact same way. Same thing on the altitude piece, there's a worm shaft here where you can install that on this side instead. Both the altitude and azimuth comes with built-in degree markers. So there's an arrow here. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see where my finger is. And there's ones here as well. So if you're trying to find something that's, let's say, five degrees to the east of something you're looking at, it's really easy to just look at this, make slow motion controls towards that direction, and you'll be, it'll, it's just much easier to find. Another cool thing that I like about this is that this is really well center balanced. If you look at it from the side here, you'll see that the telescope when it's installed here, it's directly over the center of mass, which is pretty neat. That's, I think that's why it can handle my 6SE so well, so seamlessly without any kind of issues. It's just really well center balanced. But that's not all. If you have a telescope with a longer focal length or if the 
weight distribution on the telescope isn't exactly as small as my 6SE. You can actually turn this around, put this at an angle where you can distribute the weight a little bit better. So I'm going to take this off right now and then I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I have the big Allen wrench. I'm just going to unhook this. All right, so I have the bolt removed and I can remove this now. And you can see that there is an octagonal shape here and an octagonal shape here. So you have eight different configurations where you can install this. We already saw one where it was upside down. That's one, but you, I don't know at what point you'd want to use that. So if you need some more leverage on your telescope, you can actually install it like this. I'm just gonna do another configuration. It's a little bit off. I'm just gonna screw in the bolts here using the Allen wrench. All right, that's been tightened. And now the orientation is now like this. So I can loosen this. And I'll tighten this. So now if the telescope is heavier on the front end, you can put it here like this and it'll be still be center balanced. So there are some configuration changes that you can make to this pretty easily and pretty quickly. And if I turn this around this way and I turn it and I loosen this and I loosen this, you can see that it works just fine, just like this. And you have eight different configurations. If you wanted, you can make that completely horizontal, although I don't know why you would, but it is something that you can do. So it gives you quite a bit of breathing rooms, like longer length telescopes here would fit really nicely. And this kind of configuration also, used, also lets you see directly at Zenith more easily. And this is kind of what I hoped, wished I did uh, before my last session because Jupiter was so far in the sky that once it got high enough, I couldn't actually see it uh, or I couldn't put my telescope to it because the bar here kept hitting it, the handlebar kept hitting it. But, but I didn't want to take this off in freezing weather and, and make adjustments, but it's something that we definitely could do. So let's compare the SV Boney SV225 with a couple of other Altaz mounts that are out there that are of similar specs and see how well this stands up against them. Let's quickly compare the SV Boney SV225 Altaz mount to four other competitors. We'll be looking at the Skywatcher AZ5 mount, the Astrotech Voyager 3, Explore Scientific Twilight Nano, and a generic Celestron Altaz mount. Looking at the specs of the SV Boney, it weighs just 2.3 kilograms or about 5 pounds. It has a capacity of 10 kilograms. It does have slow motion controls and the controls are very long, allowing for much more precise controls. It has a Vixen type saddle and it costs $130 at the making of this video. Comparing this to the Skywatcher AZ-5 mount, it also weighs 2.3 kilograms and has a, but it has a weight capacity of 6.8 kilograms or about 15 pounds. It does have slow motion controls, but they're very short. We'll take a look at a picture really soon. It also comes with a Vixen type saddle, but it costs $420. Looking at the listing on the Skywatcher website, we can see that the slow motion controls are very small and very close to the mount itself, which can get a little bit awkward. This one does come with a 1.75 inch adjustable tripod, but I don't think the tripod itself is worth another $300. Next mount we're gonna look at is the Astrotech Voyager 3. This one is tiny. It weighs less than a kilogram or less than two pounds. It has a capacity of five kilograms or about 11 pounds, so weight, to capacity ratio is pretty large in this one, which is pretty impressive. But it doesn't have any slow motion controls. You'll have to unlock the altitude and azimuth locks to move the telescope manually. That could be a deal breaker for a lot of people. It has an universal type mount, which means it has a Vixen mount with an L bracket installed, which can be removed. And it costs $150. So price-wise, it's closer to the SV Boney. And looking at the product on Astronomics, we can see that it looks really cool. It's actually pretty sleek and it's a very new product from Astronomics. But we can see that there are no slow motion controls. We unlock the altitude mount here and the azimuth part of the mount here, but it can take cameras and other small optics pretty easily. So next one we're gonna look at is the Explore Scientific Twilight Nano. For some reason, I could not find the weight of this thing anywhere. I don't know why it's not published online, but it has a capacity of 6.3 kilograms or about 14 pounds. It does have slow motion controls, but they're pretty short. We'll take a look at that soon. It has a Vixen type saddle and it costs $100. So price wise, it's pretty low. And looking at the mount here, it looks a little bit flimsy. It does come with a tripod, which is which is kind of nice, but the tripod is kind of flimsy. And again, I couldn't find how much this whole thing weighs itself. I can tell you it's probably more than the five pounds that the Skywatcher and the SV Boney mount weighs. The last one we're gonna look at is a generic Celestron Altaz mount. And the one I'm looking at weighs three and a half kilograms or about 7.8 pounds. So this is the heaviest of the bunch. And it has a capacity of just four and a half kilograms or 10 pounds. So 
the weight to capacity ratio here is the worst. But it does have really nice slow motion controls. It's pretty long. But the saddle is going to disappoint you. It only has something that can hold one and a quarter inch threaded camera or a spotting scope or something like that. But the price is pretty attractive at $94, but I really don't see myself using it. And looking at the listing on Amazon, this is what the mount looks like. You can see the the mount header right here. It has it is not a vixen type vixen type mount. You need a one and a quarter inch threaded screw that goes into your optics. But the slow motion controls actually look pretty nice. I'm sure it, it is pretty smooth. To conclude this video, I just want to say that this is an excellent alt as mount, especially for the price point. It's lightweight, it's versatile, and it's very affordable. And on top of that, it's extremely beginner friendly because you can just install your telescope, install all of these motion controls, and you are good to go. I'm looking forward to using this mount for all of my future star parties and outreach events. If you have any questions about this mount, please let me know in the comments below. To get more information about my outreach events and to stay in touch in general, subscribe to this channel, find me on other parts of social media, including Blue Sky, and join our Discord server where I very frequently post about the activities that I'm doing. And the community is also growing full of astronomers and astrophotographers from all over the world, where we're just constantly learning from each other and we would love to have you. Thank you for your time and until next time, clear skies.